You just bought a new Mac and it still feels alien and empty. All you need is a little customization and a couple apps to make the Mac experience much, much better. Let's kick things off by fixing one of the most annoying little quirks of Mac OS, the cluttered menu bar that's always staring you in the face. New apps love to toss their icons up there and pretty soon that narrow strip is jam-packed with shortcuts hiding behind the notch. A free tool called Ice sorts the chaos in seconds and makes the whole top of your screen feel breathable again. Ice does a lot of fancy tricks, but the one I lean on every single day is hiding extra icons. Just grab an icon in the visible column, drag it over to hidden, and phew, it's gone from sight until you actually need it. Want to peek at the hidden stuff? Click the ice icon and everything reappears as if nothing ever left. If you crave an even cleaner vibe, ice can drop down a second ice bar just under the regular menu bar, showing all your tucked away icons so they never overflow. You can flip on a show on hover switch so that secret bar only pops up when you glide your mouse over the empty space. Perfect for keeping distractions to minimum. Feeling artsy? or just bored, go ahead and tend the menu bar, add a soft shadow, or round the corners for kicks. It's tiny, lightweight, and because it's open source and GitHub, completely free, making it one of the best helpers around for any menu bar drama. Now, every Mac user who's ever dipped a toe into Windows land misses the dead simple drag and drop way Macs install and yank out apps. You drop a fresh app bundle into applications to install and chuck it in the trash to uninstall. Easy, except little leftover files still lurk in your drive like confetti after a party. Pure Cleaner sweeps up that mess before it turns into real clutter. Unlike its older cousins, Pure Cleaner shows a tidy, searchable list of every single app on your Mac, complete with a big one-click uninstall button beside each name, so Dishon software is practically foolproof. It even keeps an eye on the trash. If you delete an app the old-school way, Pure Cleaner pops up and offers to wipe the leftovers for you, saving you from hundreds hunting around in hidden library folders. There's also a handy right-click option in Finder. I use it for removing anything and everything because it keeps my system neat and it's a total lifesaver when a cranky app needs a squeaky clean reinstall. I'm just gonna say it straight. Apple's own Office apps, Pages, Keynote, Numbers, don't do it for me. I never open them, I never miss them, and frankly, they feel a bit stuck in the past. Instead, give WPS Office a try. It's easier to navigate, cramped with extra features, and in practical every way it feels like an upgrade you didn't know you needed. Not many folks realize this, but WPS has been around since 1988. That's older than most memes of you watching. After all, the time on the job can now stand in for Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Acrobat, and half the random AI plugins I used to juggle. Big files, weird file types, whatever you throw at it, the app stays snappy on any Mac I install it on. Everything you expect is here. Typing papers, uh, laying out slides, crunching spreadsheets, it's all one click away. Need to sign paperwork while you're out. The phone version of WPS Office is super lightweight and syncs with your desktop, so you can finish the job right from the checkout line. The secret sauce is WPS AI, and it runs locally. That means the smarts live in your computer, not floating in the cloud so your work stays private. While you type, fixes spelling and nudges you with cleaner sentences, paste in a mess of bullet points, can flip them into slick slide deck almost instantly. Got a worksheet in French, but you only speak pizza, drop it in, and WPS AI turns it into English, keeping every title and picture right where they were. And when the assignment goes group mode, real-time collaboration lets everyone co-edit the same doc or polish slides together, complete with AI-powered layouts and a deep template library. When you hit save, your files come out as normal Microsoft Docs, DocX, XLSX, PPTX, so teachers and coworkers never know you switch teams. Best part, the whole download is smaller than one decent length YouTube video, so it installs fast and doesn't hog disk space. Check it out, link is in the description. Now, you already fire up ChatGPT on your phone, point Google Lens at weird signs, maybe even use Apple's fancy visual lookup on an iPad. Max, though, never had a look at this and give me stuff tool until now. The new app is called This, and the easiest way to picture it is Google Lens for macOS. I click the little eye icon in the menu bar, pick what I need, draw a quick box, and the job is done. If I choose text, it lifts words out of screenshots, pause videos, or random photos and drops them straight 
straight onto my clipboard. If I switch to barcode, the same move grabs a normal barcode or a QR code and hands me the link in a heartbeat. There's also a color picker for pulling the exact shade from any pixel on screen, which is great when I want my slides to match the blue in Sonic's fur. This is tiny, it's easy, and lives on GitHub for free. So it costs you nothing but 60 seconds to try. If you bounce between Android, Windows, iOS, and Mac OS, you've probably wished AirDrop could jump that invisible fence and play nicely with every gadget. That dream is basically what local send delivers. Think of it as AirDrop's laid back cousin who doesn't care what logo is in your laptop or phone. Fire up local send on each device, decide who's the sender and who's the receiver, and you're halfway done. On the sender, say your Mac, flip the switch to send, toss in a photo, PDF, a chunk of copied text, whatever's handy, leave the other gadget, maybe your Android tablet sitting happy on its default receive setting. As long as both gadgets are hanging out in the same Wi-Fi network, the receiver's name pops up automatically. Tap it, hit accept on the other side, and the file teleports over faster than you can say where's that USB cable. You can rename each device in the settings if Bright Pumpkin feels too weird, but beyond that, there is nothing to tweak. It just works. It's free, it's light, and feels like the kind of utility Apple or Google should have built years ago. Speaking of things that should be easy, let's talk music. Are you team Spotify or team Apple Music? I keep begging myself to love Apple Music on the Mac, but the built-in app feels like wrestling a garden hose. So I switched to Cider and suddenly everything clicked. Cider is a wrapper, meaning it puts a fresh coat of paint around the real Apple Music engine. All my playlists stay the same, yet the whole place looks cleaner and runs smoother. I can jump between light and dark themes on a whim, pop out a mini player while at work, or blow up an immersive view when I'm shouting lyrics in the kitchen. At last, I can sort playlists by the day I added songs, flang music to Chromecast in the living room, and even tinker with Cider's own audio processing that claims to sweeten the sound, though my average ears can swear it's better. Just about every color, font, and layout slider is mine to mess with, so the player feels like it belongs to me, not to some committee in Cupertino. Cider does cost a few bucks, but it's cheaper than a single fancy coffee and makes Apple Music fun again. But okay, these apps are optional. My next pick is absolutely non-negotiable because it turns the single shot Mac clipboard into an endless grab bag that actually keeps up with you. Yoink works like a magic shelf that appears whenever you click, hold, and start dragging any file. Big, small, documents, zips, even random screenshots. Drop the file on Yoink's floating shelf and it parks there safely out of the way. Need to scoop up five more files from three different folders. Keep on dragging, yoink doesn't mind. When you're ready, open the target folder or email or cloud drive and fling everything out of the shelf in one smooth motion. No more opening three finer windows and playing hopscotch with paths and tabs. You can peek inside a file right on the shelf, lock it so you don't accidentally clear it, or stash dozens of items until your project is ready. It's such a simple idea, essentially clipboard but infinite. Yet, once you try it, organizing files without yoink feels like trying to carry groceries without a bag. And let's just get this off our chests. The notch on modern MacBooks might be Apple's most head scratch and design flex. It slices a little chunk out of your screen, yet it doesn't give us a sharper webcam, face ID, or even that flashy dynamic island trick the iPhone gets. At this point, the notch already feels dated like last year's meme. A tiny free app called Alcove tries to redeem the situation by turning that dead zone into some something actually useful. When Alcove is running, notifications puff out from the notch with smooth iPhone style animations. So when new messages and song info peek out exactly where your eyes already are. The same strip also lights up for live activities, start music, and the album art slides open. Plug in AirPods and a little card confirms they're paired. Crank up the volume and a subtle bar fills up so you know how loud things are getting. Even your focus mode flips a gentle banner when it changes. I've been has an Alco for some time and it hasn't hogged battery, memory, or my sanity. It simply makes the Mac feel fresher, almost like Apple quietly shipped Dynamic Island for laptops. And because the download is free, it's a no-brainer experiment. Now, quick show of hands. Who still uses Apple's Magic Mouse? 
I retired mine the minute my wrist said nope and switched to comfy Logitech. The third party mice work fine in macOS until you scroll. The wheel feels jittery, stops and starts and makes smooth web pages look like they're loading through dial-up. The fix, weirdly enough, is another utility, tiny utility called MOS. After installing MOS, I open its settings, nudge the step, speed and duration sliders a bit and suddenly the scroll wheel glided like butter. It even lets you save different profiles per app, which is Perfect if you game on macOS. Yes, I said if. And want your mouse to feel snappy and steam, but silky and safari. Ever since I set it up, my Logitech behaves exactly like it does on Windows, only without the driver drama. And again, the price tag is exactly zero. All right, bonus time. Let's talk focus. When you sit down to get work done, the classic Pomodoro trick is still the easiest place to start. You work for a bit, you rest for a bit, repeat until your brain feels like mashed potatoes. The usual recipe is 25 minutes of grind, five minutes of chill, but that schedule can feel like a prison buzzer if your flow kicks in at 24 minute mark. I've tried a mountain of timers and the one that finally stuck is an app called Session. It was built with Pomodoro in mind, yet it refuses to be bossy. When the timer hits zero, it slides into what the developer calls an overflow phase. In plain English, that means the clock keeps running and you can choose to stretch, grab water, or just push on if you're in a roll. Even if you bail out early, say you manage only 17 focus minutes before the cat walks across the keyboard, session still locks that effort, so it doesn't vanish into the void. Everything from work length to short and long breaks can be tweaked in the settings, so you end up with a rhythm that fits your own brain instead of someone else's stopwatch. My favorite touch is that you can tell session to start each round with a single deep breath. That tiny pause pulls your shoulders out of your ears and tells your mind, okay, let's do this. Simple idea, surprisingly powerful. Pile all of today's tools together and macOS suddenly feels like a custom-built cockpit instead of a one-size-fits-all sofa. Sure, I wish Apple shipped per perfection right out of the box, but where's the adventure in that? Macs will never be quite as tinker friendly as a Windows tower full of RGB fans, yet every tweak we make adds a little sparkle the engineers in Cupertino forgot. And believe me, with every new macOS update, Apple leaves a fresh trail of missing features for us to hunt down. I will keep testing the good stuff and passing the cheat sheets straight to you, so smash that like button, subscribe button. If you haven't already, thanks for hanging out, and I'll catch you in the next video, hopefully after you've taken a nice, guilt-free five-minute break.